so here is my sans blanket the crocheted the crocheted version i know some people were saying that the the pattern was a little bit tricky to, to complicate it and i think you are right and um, so i'm just going to try and show you bit by bit how to do the blanket and how i did it so that's just my little one there is a close-up of the border so remember they only take white wool they can only accept blankets that are done in white wool so i'm just gonna get started off it says 104 chains but i did 104 chains and it was way too big it was about five inches too big so just making a foundation chain and i'm not actually going to count them so i'm sure you all know how to do the, the chain so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to fly on here and the overall um dimensions of the blanket that they want are i think it's 22 to 24 inches so i think what i did for the last one was i made my chain to be about 22 inches and then worked from there i think that's what i did anyway so i'm just going to keep going making a really long chain and then i'll stop in a second and measure it and see how far we are all right where's my oh, came off the hook so I didn't pull it too tight, just kind of taut. So that's about, oh, that's 19. So put that back in and do a little bit more. So up to about 22. I think you really do need an even number, but it doesn't really matter because you're only going to have one left at the end and you can cover that up easily enough or rip it out. All right, let's try that again. Make sure you can see what I'm doing. So there's starting at the zero. Pull it kind of tight-ish, but not... Oh, right over too long now. So there we go. Let me just rip that back. about there okay so that gives me about 22 inches okay so let's get sorted out here um where am i right so the round one it says double crochet into the second chain from the hook so that is my you don't count the one that's on your hook so there is my first one but hard to see and there's my second one so I'm going to double crochet into there okay oh I'm just knocked the whole thing over there and then we do a chain one chain and then we miss this one so we're going to miss this one and we're going to go into the next one and do a double crochet in there and we're going to repeat that all the way along so one chain let me see if I can make this a little bit bigger so I miss one so we're going to miss this one and go into here Right, it's a bit hard to see and then we're going to chain one miss one and go into here so you basically have to do that all the way across um it is a wee bit fiddly at the start because you don't really have anything to hold on to hope you can still see because i'm trying to look in two places at once here way across. 
else. Just remember to miss one. My best advice, I think, for the first two rows, because it's a, it's a two row pattern all the way through. So do take your time for the first two rows and make sure you get it right. Because if you go wrong at the start, you're in diffs. So keep working all the way along until you get to the end of the line. Okay, so we've got to the end of the first row, just about. You can see I've chained one. I'm going to miss this one. I'm going to the last one that I can make. I still have a chain left over. Doesn't matter because I'll be able to cover that up. Now, just before we go on, I'm going to measure it again and you'll see that it's kind of shrunk. Make sure you can see what I'm doing. So it's kind of got to about 20 inches, which is perfect because by the time you get the border on, that'll bring it up to the full size. Okay, so you turn your work. And let's have a wee look. Yeah, one chain, and this counts as your first double. Okay, so one chain. So can you see this? The chain space that we've got in here. We're going to make a treble stitch. So put your yarn round into the space. Sorry, no, not into the space. Round and into the stitch. Make your treble and then it's a double into the double below. You can see this. So then into the chains, yeah, it actually is under the actual chain hole. And then a double into there. So I'm trying to keep an eye on oh, on the screen as well as what I'm doing. This is very complicated. A treble into the space. And a double to here. And a treble into the space. So all my terms are UK terms for, for the doubles and the trebles. So just keep on going. Oh, no, I'm on a double. A double. And a treble. Again, all the way along. It's tricky until you get at least a bit of something to to hold on to. Double, treble, double, treble. So I should have said before, white wool, double knitting wool. I'm using a, a four millimeter. Hook. I love these little these little hooks. They are really comfy. I hold my crochet hook like a pencil. A lot of people hold it like that, like a knife, but I just can't do that. But whatever works for you. That was a treble onto a double and a treble. See, it's easy to kind of get a bit confused, especially on this first. 
row. So do you take your time, check, travel. And this is the second row of your two row pattern. And you can kind of see, well that's the back, if you turn it over you can see the pattern starting. Oh. It's like little shells. Almost hard to see. I'm trying to make it a bit clearer on the screen. I think I've just made it even worse. And they go a little bit. Hang on. I think I've just made it even more blurry. But double and treble all the way along until you get to the end. So off you go. Right, so we're just at the end of the first, or sorry, the, the second row. So I just need to do a treble into that space. And we finish on a double. And then turn. Now this is where it's easy to go wrong, I think, if you don't start on the right place. So we do a chain. Now it says make a double crochet into the first double. What you need to make sure to do is this oh, where are we? this space right underneath that's where we're going to start so that's going to be our first double and then we're back to double and chain so chain so what we're doing is we're really missing out what was the treble the kind of the bumpy part of the of your little cluster and double back in there. So I'm just going to take that back out again. I'm going to see if I can come a wee bit closer and let you see that again. So we've turned our work and we've made one chain. Have I made my chain? Yes, I have. So when we turn our work, this is what we see and it's this here. This is where we're going to go in to make our double. So double in there and then chain. Miss one, so we're going to miss that one. And a double into the next one. Chain one, miss one, Miss this one and into here. So all the time you're really doing a double into a double. So we're missing the treble from the last one and into this one. So so much again. Miss this one and go into here. Make your double. Chain one. Trying to make sure the light isn't kind of getting in the way. I'll just move this light a little bit. Let's see, does that make any difference? Oh, maybe went there. Sorry. So, miss this one into here. Miss this one into here. Oh, forgot to do my chain there. You see how easy it is to go wrong? Chain. Miss this one. Into here. Chain. Miss this one. You can kind of see it's, it's the bigger holes that you're going into. Just have a wee check. And carry on. 
So that is your, that's all that is to your two, your two row pattern. And you just keep going until you've got a big square. So keep going. Enjoy, it'll take a while and we'll see you at the end. So we've finished our blanket. Mine now measures about 20 inches square. And I'm just finishing off the last row, which is a row two. So it was the double and then treble into the space, double, treble into the space. So I'm just going to finish off the very last stitch with a double into there. So now we have to turn and we're ready to do our edging now. So the first thing we need to do after we've turned is we chain four. One, two, three, four. And that counts as your first treble and your first chain. Because what we're doing along here is we are treble, chain and miss one, treble, chain and miss one all the way along. So that's your first treble and your first chain. So we're going to get ready to treble and we're going to miss this one you can see it. and we're going to go into this bigger space which is really where you would have done your, your double on your, on your other rows. You can see, so we're going into that space there and we're going to do a treble. And then a chain and we're going to miss one again. So we're going to miss this one and go into this bigger space. If you give it a little pull, you can see you're going in here. You can yarn over first and in we go. Give myself a bit more wool to work with. I'm getting a bit tangled. <coughs> Chain one, miss one miss this one and go into here and again oh sorry I did a double take that one out again yarn over into here so everybody works to a different tension I think my tension is quite loose compared to to other people's but just work with whatever you've got. If you find that you're working very loose, go down to maybe a three and a half hook. But again, the thing is with blankets like this, you can't have them too gappy. Just because of what their purpose is. And just keep going all the way across. I'll speed up a wee bit now. You've kind of seen what we're doing. But just find making these blankets for sands, these little memory box blankets. It's just a great time to just think about, pray for the families that are going to get these blankets. And if you've ever been in that situation yourself or known somebody who has been you'll know or you'll have a bit of a a bit of experience about what a really terrible time that is and how maybe a little something like this something like a one of these blankets can bring a bit of comfort at the time and in years to come we'll just Build up a bit of a a bit of a memory for that family. And sands really do an amazing work. And they're well worth supporting. And if this is just a little way that we can do that, then 
That's very special. And we all mightn't in our lives be able to do big or amazing things or things that we think are big or amazing or special. But if we're all able to give a little bit back, then surely that's something, isn't it? Right, so we're at the corner. So it's time for a chain. And where shall we go? Let's go into there. So to make our corner, we're going to chain three. One, two, three. Turn the corner. And we're going to make a treble into that same space. Now. We are going to do the same all, all the way along. When you're going down the side, it's a bit harder to kind of decide where to place your stitch. But if you can see, there's like raised parts, like little hills and valleys all the way along. And just basically choose one and stick with it. So either put it into a valley all the time or put it into a hill all the time. And I think the way that I've started is I'm going to put it into the raised part every time. So chain and make a treble into there. So just be careful not to pull it too tight along here. Chain and I'm just going to work into there. I have a feeling that the last blanket I made, I ended up going into the dips. But it doesn't really matter. So just treble, chain, even if you're kind of just making a space for it, that's fine. Just keep it nice and neat and even all the way along. So you're going to work around the whole blanket, just like that. Just always stop and have a wee think or a little check, put, pop it down. Does it, is it puckering or is it even? So you're going to work all the way down when you get to the corner you're going to do the same as you did in this corner so you're going to do a treble three chains another treble into the same space and carry on so do the whole round when you get back to the start you are going to finish with your treble space treble into here three chains at the corner and join with a slip stitch to here. So off you go with that. So just coming up to the end of that first round, a few more stitches to do. So treble and so this is kind of coming up the side, if you know what I mean. And a chain. And I'm doing my treble, my last treble into the base of the first chain. Three chains to finish the corner. One, two, three. Let me just move that a little bit. So you can see I'm not very techy minded here. And join in the third chain there. And a slip stitch. There. So, if I set that out flat, you'll just see. Move that out of the way. There is our corner. Okay. Now, we need to basically do three rounds like that. 
So what I did the last time, instead of just starting and doing four more chains here, just to neaten it off a little bit, I kind of did a slip stitch into this chain. And then a slip stitch into the top of the next treble. Because I just find that neatened it off and didn't leave a big gap. And it means you just don't really notice where your join is. Then four chains. One, two, three, four. And away we go again. So that counts as your first treble and your chain. And now you're just working into the top of each treble. And a chain. And into the top of here. chain and into the top of here and you're just going to do that all the way around work your corners the same I'll just show you I'll just kind of skip on and show you what to do at the corner this time so your treble in this the last one as you get to the corner just ignore these bits here because I've just kind of skipped on and a chain and you're going to go into this space and make a treble and now your three chains one two three another treble into the corner space and a chain and now back into your trebles and I'll just do another one and then I'll lay it flat and you can kind of see what your corner will look like now now ignore this bit because that's just where I've skipped on so you can see that what we've done is treble into the treble underneath chain this one has been made into the corner, three chains for your new corner, this treble into the corner, chain and now we're back into our posts. So you're going to do three rounds like that in total and then onto the fiddly bit that I've kind of made up because I didn't understand the pattern. So do three rows like that and then stop. So we've come to the end of our third round. So I just need to chain and close that off with a slip stitch and we're done. And just like the other rounds, I'm going to kind of slip stitch my way across just to neaten it up a little bit. Okay. So to make the little pico edging, I don't even know if that's how you say it, pico, 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 I'll go with pico. Um, it's just like little points. So we're going to make a double into the top of that treble like that so this is what you're going to do in the top of every treble post so a double two chains and then you're going to kind of double that back on itself and you're going to make a slip stitch into the base of the double so there's your double there and you're just going to pop your hook back in there Pull the yarn through as a slip stitch and that just kind of doubles it over and makes a little fold. So that's in the top of every post. Into every chain space you're just going to make a double. So there's your double. So back to your post, double, two chains, double back on yourself slip stitch into the base of your stitch 
double. And then your pico stitch double. Two chains. And slip stitch through the base. Show you one more time. Double into the space. And then your pico stitch double. Two chains. And then insert. Make a slip stitch. There. So if I take that out, you can kind of see all these little mounds. Okay, it kind of neatens off. So I'm going to skip on to the corner just to let you see how that would make up. So let's go from about here. So this is going to be your double. Your pico with two chains. This one's going to look a bit messy because I've just pulled. Oops. Into the base. Not worry too much about that one. Right, double. Pico. One more into here. That's that one. So for your corner, you're going to make a double as if this was your chain. One more pico. see this because I'm kind of looking at what I'm doing not into the screen and then another double so you've kind of just put an extra one into the corner let's move on a couple of stitches another little pico in there double and we'll do one more and then lay it down flat so that you can see it And that's what your corner will look like then. You've got your pico, your double, your pico, double, pico, double. And then off we go again. So that is basically it. So let me see what side is the right side to show you. Maybe this one. So this is what it's going to look like when you're done. There we go. Is that the... Sorry. So there's your rows going across. And your border. So you've got your three, one, two, three rows of the grid and your little pico on a double and pico on a double and pico on a double. So I hope that makes sense. As I say, I kind of made that up the last part, but it kind of looks, I think, like what the picture looks like on the pattern, although it wasn't really very clear. So remember, it's a really good cause. I can start collecting the blankets if you don't want to send them off yourself. I think there's a there's an address to send it to on the pattern, but it's in England. I'm going to try and see if there's somebody who's closer, a central collection point, somebody with sands that I can send it off to. So you can either post them off yourself or get in touch with me and I can, I can start collecting them in. So I hope you enjoy making these blankets. Um, it's, as I said, it's a really worthwhile cause. They're really gratefully received and it's a really important job. Thank you.